Emily, we forgot last week to even say the name of the show of this podcast. Did we? Yeah, so <laughs> let's let's start off strong today. Hey everyone, thanks for listening. This is The Swamp. It's our podcast. It's an acronym. Stands for some whack-ass movie podcasting. My name is Dara. As always, I'm here with my lovely co-host Emily. We, Hello, everyone. If you're if you're new, oh hi. Sorry, we forgot to even tell you what this even was. You clicked <laughs> on it last week, and we immediately were just like, "Enchanted is bad," and it was like, "What am I listening to?" But we talk about movies every week, and we have themes for months sometimes. And this month is Amy Adams, and we're doing all Amy Adams movies. And this week we're covering American Hustle, Mm -hmm. which I am like so disappointed because why did I have it in my head that I thought that you loved this movie? Um, I probably really enjoyed it when I was young. I remember very much after The Hunger Games being like, okay, now I have to go down a rabbit hole because I was obsessed with Jennifer Lawrence. So I was just going to watch anything that she did. And I think this came out right after... um, uh silver Silver linings playbook Playbook. yeah (laughs) same director too yeah um so i was like oh let me just get on this and i loved her performance i remember that much the rest of the plot didn't pay attention and honestly you didn't have to Um, no but i had never all i knew about this movie is that they filmed it 20 minutes from my fucking house yeah like all over worcester yeah, they filmed this movie in the central Massachusetts, which is just mm-hmm. hilarious. Um, I love it. But all I knew about it was that, and and that you know Jennifer Lawrence is going to have that floppy hair, and she's going to do something at some mm-hmm. point. Um, mm-hmm. But I, yeah, I was like, oh, I think Emily really, really likes this one, so I was excited to watch it. And then I started mm-hmm. watching it, and I was like, this is actually. I'm like, is this dog shit, or am I just like not into it yet? Uh-huh. And it was t- two full hours, and then at like. At the halfway point, I'm like, no, I think this is dog shit. Yeah. And then watching the second half with just the mindset of like, oh, no, this movie's just really not good. Yeah. It's just really like let me stew in my feelings. Because by the end, I was like, I don't even give a fuck. I don't give a fuck who gets scammed by who, Uh what's going on, if the sheik can speak Arabic or not. Why is Robert De Niro just shows up in the third act? I hate hate that he did that for them. for what fucking reason? Like, it literally just pissed me off so bad. So that I was just, like, hate watching, like, yeah. until the end. And I was like, I'm not even, like, I'm not even gonna fucking pay attention because I'm yeah. so mad that this movie sucks. <laughs> I didn't really remember much of this movie. Um, but I knew it was trying to be a Martin Scorsese movie. Like, yeah. blatantly. And I'm shocked that they had as, as many, um big names sign up for this as they did. Uh, but also David O. Russell is coming off of like having J law win her Oscar. So mm-hmm. it makes sense to me. Um, no, and he does- clearly, he clearly has like a, a close knit, you know, group that he comes back to because J law, Bradley Cooper and Robert, Robert De, Niro De Niro are yeah. like in all of his fucking movies. That stupid movie joy about how she invents the mop. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was his too. Yep, so fucking stupid. But also, oh, um, the fighter, the fighter where Christian Bale got so skinny. I didn't be. realize that was him too. Yeah, so it's Shit. he's got he's got his kind of inner circle, if you will, of you know his his speed dial contacts that he yeah. really mm-hmm. utilized for this. But yeah, a ton of and Amy Adams, of course, the the titular the titular yeah. Amy Adams, who honestly. I don't know, like, were, were people saying, so I want to, I want to address um, the Oscar de- debate. Mm-hmm. Everyone says she should have one. Everyone says that she deserves it. Her body of work. She's amazing. She's great. For what? Tell me, for what should she have an Oscar for? For this? No. Certainly not. <laughs> Arrival? Uh... I haven't seen it. Have you seen it before? Yeah, I have. We're probably going to cover it next week, so we'll yeah. jump into that more so. But, I mean, yeah, looking at the rest of her titles... I'm like, I get that she's great. I got, I get it. But, she, but I for what? I think it's more so... I'm thinking of... Um, I feel like a lot of people give her a lot of praise for... What is it? Little Fires Everywhere? Is that oh, the one that she does with... Or, like, Sharp Objects or something? Sharp Objects, not Little Fires. Maybe that's... Yeah. I don't know. Those two, for some reason, get really, like... 
messed up in my head. I've never seen either of them, but Sharp Objects is the one I'm thinking yeah. of. I think a lot of people give her a lot of praise for that. But, like, her, she was barely in it. I mean, Arrival, don't know. I've never seen Nocturnal Animals. And then I see a ton of Justice League shit. Ew. Which yeah, certainly she's... not. Yeah, she's just Lois Lane. And last week we discussed the whole, like, people being like, she should have one for Enchanted. I'm like, you should read a book. Like, you should, like, yeah. really. Doubt, yeah. maybe? You watched Doubt. We we thought oh. about covering Doubt. <laughs> <laughs> we we were going to cover Doubt up until the moment that for I last, finished. For, for last May. In, it was, yeah, for May Roll Streep. For Roll Streep. Oh, my God. And I fully watched it. And I was like, girl, I can't even start to think of ways to make this even a little funny. Like, I'm not smart <laughs> enough to talk about it seriously. And you cannot make corruption in the church within, like, child... Uh, like no no it was yeah. yeah that movie's a lot that movie's a lot <clears throat> yeah certainly not julia and julia and certainly not the muppet movie um, well i mean it was don't get me wrong <laughs> fabulous i love it i don't know vice but like none of it really sticks out to me but i feel like no, she like plays- they're all they're all good good like good performances good fine <clears throat> thumbs up gold star for you but i'm like does are any of them oscar winning no and because- it just feels like she takes such a back seat in roles to men <gasps> yeah. she takes she takes such like that supporting actress role, which is fine, mm-hmm. you can still win an oscar for that, but i would love to see her in more of that titular character. Yeah, and maybe just when she's done that, I just haven't seen it. Like you said, like I just haven't seen her big like leading moments maybe. But I just felt like in this, I'm like she always does that sort of to me that it's like um I'm really sexy but I'm very elegant. Like oh, yeah. I'm I'm like an elegant sexy kind of like oh, I don't know. Which is just to me kind of boring yeah and her whole like oh i'm so i'm a well-educated woman in bad circumstances and i yeah. you know i'm gonna do this whole swindling thing her character kind of interested me basically up until we got introduced to jennifer lawrence and then i was like <laughs> oh i'm sorry like i'm kind of on the fence about j-law as a as an actress yeah, i think fair. she's i think she's great sometimes other times i don't love her her as a personality figure has just never really been my favorite the whole like oh, i'm so normal i'm like okay like let's mm-hmm. whatever you're on the hate but, train i i mean not the hate train but she is just i <laughs> well but i you know <laughs> i have since since having seen mother i'm like oh i mm-hmm. get that you are like actually very good and talented yes and, you know I can respect her as that, but she just, I wouldn't put her in, she's not one of my faves, you know? Yeah, sure I'm not, I'm not excited to see her pop up and stuff. I'm not going to, like, go see mm. something because she's in it, you know? I'm, I'm not yeah. like you. Unfortunately, I am one of those people, but I'm not, um, I, I, I do have to say, right now, not a fan. She's, she's a, a, a Amy Schumer apologist, and I Ugh. fucking despise Amy Schumer. She's a Ugh. piece of human garbage. Oh, and then, yeah, everyone being like, oh, you just don't want to hear a woman speak. I'm like, no, I, I don't want to hear a Zionist speak. Yeah, <laughs> right? Oh, just like, but it's crazy how the cancellation train of anyone who has defended Amy Schumer has just been like outright flat out canceled. Like there's a drag queen who's on this newest season of All Stars mm. who basically commented on like an Amy Schumer post and was like, you tell him, girl, or just like, no. Something. And, like, literally the fandom is, like, she should be shot. Like, it's, like, (laughs) literally, like, the fandom is, like, uh, like, fully, like, barring her, like, saying that she should be edited out of the show for that. Oh, my God. Which is a little extreme, but it is, like, yeah, if you, if you are an Amy Schumer, if you're a friend of Amy, uh, Mm -hmm. you are, yeah, you're canceled by the girlies. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're a friend of Amy Adams, though, yeah, fine. Yeah. Sure. Neutral. Yeah. I'm neutral. But um but yeah, Jennifer Lawrence in this she kinda ate. Like I She was in her bag. This was her era, so And her her character did kind of like this whole movie kind of pissed me off and annoyed me. <laughs> and I think like the whole mob wife thing, unfortunately, once you've watched The Sopranos it's Tired and, and played s- out. But like once you see Edie Falco give such a incredibly nuanced performance mm-hmm. as the like 
complicated mob wife. And then yeah. even also in Sopranos, you got Adriana, who's also kind of like, she's more of the Rosalind character, kind of the more like trashy, uh, but like she's, you know, the quote unquote life of the party, like really charismatic, everyone loves yeah. her, but she's maybe like not as in on it as everyone uh-huh. is. But just those two characters in The Sopranos are just played so brilliantly. And they have the opportunity to do it over the course of a, you know, eight season long HBO show. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, you know, comparing them directly isn't, mm-hmm. but I'm kind of like, oh, okay, you're the messy, you're the messy mob wife. Like we get it. We've seen it. Yeah. What, like, did she do anything new with it? No. Did, but mm-hmm. was it, was it fine? Yes. And did she eat Amy Adams up in every scene? Yes. Gobbled. Yes. Especially yeah. when it gets to that bathroom scene of them together. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, Amy. You are, you are, like, trying to just keep yeah. yourself alive. Like, uh-huh. you're, you're treading water and this bitch is on a jet ski. Just <laughs> fucking doing circles around you. Yeah, she's like, I, she, Jennifer Lawrence is like, have you ever seen an orca, like, play with a seal on, like, an ice float? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly like that. Amy oh Adams fighting for her life, and J Law is just like having fun playing with her food. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> which, which again, as far as the characters in the movie, of course, J Law's character was that more loud, boisterous. Of course, look at which, me, scene stealer, and Amy is, Adams was the more understated, yes. you know, throughout. Which I, it I is get easy, it. It is easier to play that. You know, she's more of a yeah. like a character instead of, like, an actual person on the screen. But just, uh, not about Amy Adams specifically, but just the thing about this movie that really just pissed me off Mm -hmm. was that, so, uh, basically, for plot summary, I guess, 15 minutes into this, uh, it's just that Christian Bale and Mm -hmm. Amy Adams are both sort of, like, schemers hustlers if you will yeah um and they meet each other and they both have this connection that they're like we're gonna be really good at like grifting rich people basically Mm -hmm. and they set up this sort of illegitimate business where she pretends to be british and they do like um like check fraud basically where they're like giving people fake checks uh, you know, to do like bank, in, like international investment banking that is fake, essentially. Yeah. And they get caught by FBI agent Bradley Cooper. God. Who is like, hey, you guys are going to go to jail for a really long time unless you help me be mm-hmm. sort of pawns in FBI setup schemes to get, he wants four criminals. And he's like, okay, we want four people who are, like, worse than you, basically. So you're going to help us, you know, set them up, essentially. And this is based off of, like, an actual series of sting mm-hmm. operations in, like, the yeah. late 70s. Mm-hmm. But obviously this movie at the beginning is like, <laughs> yeah, so this did happen. But we're going to make it fun for the movies. Yeah, which, which they didn't like, do. I'm like, okay, whatever. Yeah, like, literally you didn't even make it fun for the movies. So. Yeah. Um, but essentially they're like, okay, our first target is going to be Jeremy Renner, who actually hasn't never done anything wrong. He just is trying to reinvigorate gambling. Um, so he seems like the kind of guy who would take a bribe. So yeah. we're going to do, we're going to rock that. And yeah. then Christian Bale's kind of like, Hey, I thought you said we were going to like get other criminals and now you want us to like take down a bunch of high profile politicians. Like uh-huh. this kind of seems like it's not the deal we made. Yeah, His targets keep getting bigger and bigger as the movie goes on. And so basically Bradley Cooper's like, shut the fuck up. You have to do what I say because I'm in charge here. And they set up this whole sting operation where they're basically going to get Jeremy Renner into accepting a bribe. But then it sort of ropes in that he has mob ties because he's a politician. But he still objectively, like I texted you, I was probably three quarters of the way into this movie where I was like, is Jeremy Renner like a bribe taking politician or did they just pick him? Like, did he ever do anything illegal prior to that other than he had some vague mob ties maybe some campaign finance fraud whatever but it didn't Uh seem like he was like an actual criminal target that they were like trying to get evidence on it just seemed like they just picked him they were like yeah that guy seems bribey i don't know like yeah i really couldn't even say so what does that say about the movie they're like oh he's from new jersey so that seems (laughs) illegal (laughs) Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But basically, as they get deeper into it, it gets, you know, oh, it goes all the way to the top. 
And mm-hmm. the very getcha at the end is that Amy Adams and Christian Bale had actually set the whole thing up so that the guy doing the wire transfer was on their side. And mm-hmm. then they like they <clears throat> flip it on them and they're basically like, okay, we got you now. So we'll give you all this money back if you let us go, let us go. for free <laughs> yeah. and like, you know, reduce his sentence and everything. Uh-huh. And then Bradley Cooper just loses his job for being a fucking idiot. And that's yeah. the movie. And basically, and Christian Bale's wife is... Uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Ros- yeah, Jennifer Lawrence. And she basically isn't in on it, but she just wants to hang out, basically. She so just she's wants like, to be part of the fun. She's like, take me with you. And he's like, no, we're doing like a sting operation. And she's like, I don't care. I want to get drunk with the girls. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so when he brings her, she like stirs up trouble because she's like, no, I really want to fuck this mob guy. And they're, they're like, that's not part of the plan. <laughs> but she's just too fun. She's just too too much fun. fun. Well, I love her character because even though she is very much like that kind of ditzy mob wife, they do give her the sort of background enough that it's like she's depressed as fuck. She hates mm-hmm. the, like the man she's married to, and like definitely gives her enough background that I think Jennifer Lawrence can play with it a little bit. Um, and I really appreciated that because, like you said, like she is comparatively to like The Sopranos, very one note. Yeah. Um, but I think there was a, a, enough to make her fun. And, and that's why I think her scenes or that when we finally get into sort of her involvement is where I finally was like, okay, now I have a reason to at least like pay attention mm-hmm. a little bit or care. Because yeah. Amy Adams' character, they set it up that she, you know, oh, she was a stripper and she like isn't, you know, doesn't have a great background or whatever, but mm-hmm. she's really smart. So she can mm-hmm. sort of swindle her way. <clears throat> and that was all great. But as soon as we finished her backstory... Basically, I didn't care. Then her as a character, I'm like, yeah, but you're not interesting me. But the the thing that just confused me and kind of pissed me off was that she's like pretends to be British, right? That's her whole thing. Is that to convince people that mm-hmm. she's wealthy, she says that she's a lady and mm-hmm. that she's and that she's British and she's gonna like help Edith them. or something like that. Edith Greensbury or something yeah. fucking stupid. Um, that she's, you know, going to help them with international, like, finance mm-hmm. or whatever. And so she's British. Okay, that's fine. But then Bradley sure. Cooper Bradley Cooper gets their asses. And he's like, hey, I know that this is fraudulent. And I know that you are not actually, like, a lady. I don't but think then, he knew that, though. No, what he says, he's like, he's like, you're doing, um, he's like, you're doing, uh, like, uh, identity theft. He's like, he says, he says, we know you're not a lady. We know you're not, like, of this status that you claim to be. And that's why he's like, we're going to get, he's basically says that they can get Amy Adams in jail, but they can't get Christian Bale yet. And that's why they like throw her in that cell. Yeah. Right. And they, and that's why they like use that as leverage to like bargain that they're going to set it all up or whatever. But in that moment, I thought that he was like, got your ass. You're not British. Oh no. He's but then stupid. She, but then she kept the British accent up uh, for the majority of the rest of the movie. And I was like, why is she still talking like that? I was like, they they got her ass. They know. But then it turns out that he didn't know she wasn't British. He just knew she wasn't royal British. And I was yeah. like, what the fuck? The way she's like, I'm from Albuquerque. Like, she uh-huh. finally does her big yeah. reveal. And I'm like, oh, that's why she's been doing this fake. I just thought that Amy Adams was like, no, I'll just stick with the British thing. Like, <laughs> Well, it's just not well explained. It's not a good movie. You know what I mean? If I have these questions afterwards, which could easily be filled in, your movie has enough plot holes that I'm like, what the fuck? And maybe I'm stupid. Maybe this is like, a this to me is a movie that your grandpa watches. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like, okay, yeah, this is fine enough. It's not Scorsese, but it's fine enough. You know what I mean? Or because he was, like, actually really into, like, keeping up with Mm. these in the newspaper when it happened. And you're like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I bet it was kind of interesting then. But this movie is just, he was like, I was around for that. Uh But, um, yeah, no. Well, Bradley Cooper, unfortunately, I think this is just him playing himself. Yeah, he also oh. him and Jeremy Renner really like the 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 scales here for me. I love me some Christian Bale. Oh, of that course. man, of course, can do no wrong. And I'm, I'm sorry, you can't make him not hot to me. Have him you be emaci- emaciated in the fighter smash. This movie with the comb over smash as Dick Cheney smash. You cannot put enough prosthetics <gasps> on that man. 
his sexiness will <laughs> always push through. Mm. Like, I got it. When Amy Adams was like, no, I fuck with this man. I'm like, like the way he had the two most beautiful women mm-hmm. and he was supposed to be this kind of like weird schlubby, like, yeah. no, I was like, I understand. Cause you mm-hmm. look, you look into those eyes. That's Christian Bale. Uh-huh. Like, but him, so he's great in this and he does his whole big transformation Absolutely. where he's like, oh, I'm, yeah, I've got a comb over and I'm kind of, uh, you know, a schmuck or whatever. Yeah. I don't care. That was so tipped into the negative because uh-huh. of the presence of Bradley Cooper and Jeremy Renner, two men who just piss me off. Yeah. I think they're bad actors. Yep. I think that they are unimpressive and they annoy me. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to see them on my screen. Mm-hmm. And the fact that both of them were just constantly fucking talking. I was like, Always. Jeremy, it didn't end. Jeremy Renner's fucking wig. Oh my god. Don't the get me hair, started. The hair in this movie <clears throat> is an entire fucking bucket of clams that we are going to have to crack mm-hmm. into. Because the hair yeah. in this movie is fucking crazy. But Bradley Cooper is basically, I'm like, is this performance kind of chill because you're being so pathetic that I'm like, at least mm-hmm. I'm being validated and hating you? Yeah. I'm like, am I putting up with this? Because I'm like, yeah, you fucking suck. <clears throat> like, you suck rocks. Yeah. And at least, at least, <laughs> at least your character is like proving that. I don't know. But mm-hmm. he was, mm-hmm. he was just like fine. And it was just like yeah. pretty mid. It was very but, mid. I've never been impressed by anything Bradley Cooper has done. Not once. Not yeah. a once. Like, I'll give him no, Silver I'll Linings it, Playbook. No, you know what I'll Maybe. give him? Maybe. I'll what? give him the voice of the raccoon. In the Guardians of the Galaxy mm. movies, he's actually pretty fine in that. Okay. As far as as far as being the voice of a snippy little raccoon guy, sure. Mm-hmm. That's where we I draw the fucking line. Mm-hmm. Stay in your lane. This is lane. where he should live. Stay in your lane. Go stay over at Disney and do your bullshit voice acting gigs, Bradley. I don't want to see you. That's why I think I like that raccoon, because I don't have to look at him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ugh. He pisses me off, especially after this season's Oscar campaign and of him just, like, being so Crying pathetic. And, yeah. And so fucking pathetic. But <laughs> that's why I was like, at least this character, I'm like, yeah, that. At sucks. least I can hate him. You know what I mean? Ooh, look, Jen's gonna hustle me into picking an answer because I can never say what's what. Oh, I don't know. Uh, Jen is here to do her intro podcast segment, Chocolate or Vanilla. She's going to say two things. We're all going to say which one we like better. Jen, would you ever hustle someone? No. (laughs) I don't think you have it in you. And I think genetically, I also don't have it in me. I couldn't do it. I'm a bad, I'm genetically a bad liar because of you, I think. Yeah. That makes sense. I can see that. Yeah. It's, It's my face. I can't help but just contort my face to just reveal exactly how I feel at all times. Oh, I don't know. Um, but Jen, is there a theme this week? Wait, just kidding. Why am I asking you? Because I already know. Because we came up with these on the car ride over here because you're here with me. And we started off in the car and then we migrated to the restaurant and then we ended in my apartment here now. So this is sort of a, a journey through Jen and I's last three hours. Is this chocolate <laughs> or vanilla? Brilliant. Oh, I can't wait. Um, All right. uh, Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Vanilla. Chocolate. Wispy clouds or puffy clouds? Do you remember, like, having to learn the names of the clouds in science class and really gravitating towards some over others being like... Nimbus 2000. Oh, I love a cumulonimbus. I hate a cirrostratus. Like... (laughs) I don't remember them well enough to (laughs) rattle them off by name. And I don't know if this is controversial, but I'm going to say a wispy cloud. I like the thin, wispy, like, sparse, but low to the stratosphere. I like those better than the big old puffy ones, I think. See, I feel like they give a cooler effect, usually, especially if it's during a sunset. Yeah. But I just got a very, very cool picture this morning of some really big puffy clouds. So I'm going to have to go puffy cloud today. It fucking sucks, though, when you look in the sky and you're, like, gorgeous, beautiful clouds, and you hold your phone up, you take a picture, and it just looks like Dog nothing. Shit. You're like, yes. this, is, this does not capture the magic I'm feeling. 
I will go puffy clouds also, and the kind of with the flat bottom yep. and the puffy clouds. And yeah. we learn about that. It's because of like the density of the air makes them flat on the bottom for some reason. So that way, in art, when you're drawing them, flat on the bottom, puffy on the top. Yeah. Mm. Uh, next one: a tree air freshener or a little prism crystal hanging from your uh, from your um, mirror. I'm gonna say I don't want anything there. I'm not a great driver. I don't want any distractions. I don't want anything dangling. I am honestly too nervous to even have any of my vision obstructed at any time for any given reason. So I go for those like fuck ass little air fresheners you plug into your mm. AC vent. Um, but I will say a pine tree freshener will clear out a scent with the windows open, you know, if you need it. A crystal, what the mm-hmm. fuck is that for? What's that doing? <laughs> Nothing. She's not saving me when I wreck my car. No. Yeah. Um, She's sending I'm gonna go... goes all over the cut. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like obstructing my vision yeah. because it's like reflect refracting light <laughs> into my eyes. Um, I'm gonna go a uh, tree car freshener as well. There's something kind of retro about it that I really like. Yeah, same. I hate the fuck ass ones that look like a candle. The shape oh, of the candle. Fucked. I'm like, make it a funner shape. God damn it. Yeah. Like, grow Yankee up. Candle does not have the best design. No. And that's a Yankee Candle thing. But they smell really good. Yeah, but I'm like, make it more fun yeah. than a candle. Where's the whimsy? Yeah. Men who look like muskrats or men who look like golden retrievers? <laughs> I know Dara's answer. I love men who look like muskrats. That's, we were just out to dinner with someone who's like, my ex looked like a muskrat and showed us a picture. And I was like, that's he not a muskrat. <laughs> he doesn't have low hanging cargo pants. He doesn't have a beanie on. He's not drinking a 40 out of a fucking paper bag. Like, what are you talking about? Um, that's a golden retriever because he was a blonde, a six, five blonde man. Mm. was like a, fa- a happily married father of three. I was like, what are you talking about? Uh, I'm a muskrat girl. Yeah, if anyone that is a Patreon listener has listened to our Challengers episode, um, you'll hear us geeking about Mike Face and Josh O'Connor, and they give me muskrat energy. So I'm going to go for the muskrat on this one. I'll go muskrat for the sweep. Uh, Next one, tofu or chicken? I've been getting into tofu. Slowly but surely, but I'm I'll still go with chicken because sometimes I fuck up my tofu and it's no good. I'm not good enough yet. Yeah. Chicken is safe. Yeah, I feel you there. Um yeah, I'll go chicken as well for basically the same reason. But like I learned recently the difference between like silken tofu versus firm tofu. Mm, Like you've gotta buy the right one for the right reason, and I just thought that they were kind of all interchangeable and that is simply not the case no yeah i'm no expert but i'm gonna pick tofu because i've had it a couple times recently it's it's been it's been good pretty fire yeah yeah Yeah. uh next one applebee's or chilies i picked this because if there are any survivor listeners out there who are on twitter you know about the applebee's versus chili beef on the what should be the survivor fucking reward whatever that's happening but i'm gonna pick applebee's i know that might be controversial but i think if you know what to order applebee's is supreme versus chili's i went to chili's i went to chili's recently what the fuck is a crisper riddle me that ass it's an excuse to have a chicken tender with no meat in it you fucking weirdos get away from me yeah i have um, I grew up going to Applebee's. I think you would say you did the same. Oh, of course. Yeah. Every birthday. Yeah. Um, Chili's, I found more into my adult life. And I do think it is sh- even shittier microwave food mm-hmm. than um, Applebee's. So I'm, I'm absolutely an Applebee's girl. Chili's is trying to be something it's not. Yeah. Applebee's is so honest about what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's, she's never masked. For us. Yeah, same. Applebee's for the sweep. Um, and Chili's, I think, used to be better. Back when I was in college, House Margaritas at Chili's was a thing for us. Mm. Uh, next one. <laughs> Ozempic or buccal fat removal? <laughs> As to which offends me less, I will say the buccal fat removal at least is a surgical choice. 
You sign the papers, you go under the knife, and you get that shit sucked out. And it looks rank, but I feel like there's an element of persuasion with the Ozempic where there's this, like, weird, like, there's a ton of advertisements out for it right now, and there's just, like, a lot of people being put on it without being told the ramifications of it. So I think there's, oh, like, really? a big pharma. There's, like, a big pharma element to Ozempic oh, and it's a little sinister. Whereas yeah. the buccal fat, at least I'm like, you know you're sucking your shit out, you know? So I'll pick the buccal. I think I'm going to have to go Ozempi on this one. Like, I think it just... It doesn't make you look bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Buccal fat removal makes you look bad it's nine bad. times out of ten. I just think you know what you're doing. You're like, I'm going to be gaunt. Mm. I'm going to be a little skeleton. And at least I'm you putting know. it into the um, category of you know what you're doing in both cases, though. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to go with the buccal fat removal because I would rather remove something than ingest something. Mm. Yeah. Love. Um... Next is spreadsheets or PowerPoints? PowerPoints. I love a PowerPoint. Hot tip. Start a book club. Even if it's just you and one other person, start up a club. Read the same book at the same time. Start a PowerPoint. Make a slide for every character. Add who you picture, like you're casting. Ooh. Add it. And you and I did this for the Name of the Wind series. Yes. And I'm doing it with my friend Rachel right now for a fantasy series that we're reading. It's so fun. Make a little mm. ongoing PowerPoint, sort of a living document for you to do your casting. And then you know what they're thinking when they're reading. You're like, oh my God, absolutely not. And you get mm. to sort of contest it. Spreadsheets, fuck a spreadsheet. Too complicated, too many numbers. Makes me feel like I'm doing my taxes. No. I'm going to go, I'm going to base this off of what I've been doing at work and which I have enjoyed more. And I'm shockingly going to say a spreadsheet. Ooh. Um, I usually would say PowerPoint if you caught me like six months ago, but I've really been liking logging data because I can just turn my brain off and plug in the numbers and I, take up I a love chunk a of my row. day. I love a, a long row. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Rows, um, yeah, I've, columns. I've been lines. finding it really satisfying and being able to actually like be kind of literate in it because I never felt like I was in college, but I've actually taken the time to like reteach myself a little bit. And I find that really validating. So I'm going to go spreadsheet. I'm going to go with you. I'm going to go spreadsheet. Yes. I feel every time I do one, I want to get better at it. Exactly. Yeah. Like I know it can do more for me. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, next one, QR code or bumper sticker. I felt like I made this one. Up and I, <clears throat> I must have been thinking, in the bathroom for that one. No, I was sort of thinking like, you know, I see a QR code and I, my fight or flight kicks in, right? I oh. fucking hate that shit. But then like a self-righteous bumper sticker that's trying to preach something to me feels like a QR code, you know? It's almost mm. like I'm giving you this whether you want it or not. So I, honestly, I'll, say the, I'll say the bumper sticker because at least you're being upfront with me. A QR code, like, people who put fucking just, like, stickers on poles and shit, like, mm. throwing up stickers of QR codes, I'm like, what, you think I'm gonna fucking scan that, you idiot? I do agree that is kind of stupid, but I do find a QR code useful. If I see your baby on board sticker on your car, I might as well just, like, intentionally rear-end you. <laughs> Can I be, I, as I have a friend who is a new mom, mm -hmm. I actually recently learned that those baby on board stickers are for firefighters to go into your car to save the baby. No, that was on your window. You used to, there used to be a silver and red oval shaped well, nowadays it thing says, you would put on the window of your house to show where the kids were at. No, well, nowadays it's the baby on board sticker. Okay. It's the baby on board bumper sticker. Because I used to get pissed too. But then that my makes sense. was like, no, no, no. That's if I get in a car wreck. So that they know to go in and save the baby first. And I was like, oh, yeah, that really makes sense. Like, that I'm less judgmental now about them. 
Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I'm still going to say QR code though, because I feel like- If it has your little family and your Disney hats, I'm going to fucking rob your house. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. I'm going to rob your house I while you're out of town. I do not like those ones where you have to have somebody from- stick, I don't want to offend anybody, but- Ugly stick figures mm-hmm. of your fucking family and Disney and hats. And it has to match. Like if you have two boys and a girl, the stick figures are two boys Fuck and a girl. Yeah. Like, no, no yeah, thank at you. At least I'll, I might get something out of a QR code. Hardly ever will a bumper sticker even give me a giggle. Yeah, truth. Uh, QR code for the sweep. Um, next one. <laughs> Fighting for your life or laying down and, and accepting your fate. <laughs> <laughs> and this was just, I was just feeling a certain type of way. And I'm just, a, I'm just a lay down and take it kind of girl. <laughs> I just will not fight for my life. Like my fight or flight is actually kind of crazy. Mm. Um, and, and kind of really has kicked in a few times in my life that has gone wild. But I, in a day-to-day situation, will just lay down and take it. I'm not fighting anyone, even if it's for my own life. <laughs> um, hmm. Oh, it really depends. I think I'm in a fight for my life era right now. I wouldn't say that I'm in a lay down and take it moment. So I'll go fight for my life. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go lay down and take <laughs> it. I watch movies sometimes and somebody's getting chased and I think, just give up. I, I just would, I would run. just give up. Like, That's all so the time funny. in zombie movies, when they're like, let's form a plan. Let's have a team. And I'm like, for what? <laughs> you kill the zombies, you make it somewhere. There's just more zombies. Yeah. I would fully run into the zombies. I'd be like, take At that me. point, yeah, I'm absolutely shooting myself in the head if it's that scenario. Uh, next one, cloth napkin or paper napkin? Cloth napkin. Yeah. Not because I love the environment, because I way prefer the texture yeah. of cloth on my face than nappy kin. The amount of paper napkins I go through when I'm, say, like, out getting tacos or something like that is monstrous. Yeah. I've de- decimated a small tree. So I- I'll have to go um, cloth napkin as well. Yeah, cloth napkin for the sweep, definitely. Also feels classier. Absolutely. I don't know. Save the environment, get classy, cloth napkin. Yep, true. Uh, last one. Mango or cucumber? Ooh, a cucumber. Comes up more, I think. Also, a cocktail. I'm always going for a cocktail. There are two options, a mango one, a cucumber one. I'm always intrigued by the cucumber cocktail. Yeah, I'm going to have to go cucumber as well. I feel like it's more ingrained in my daily life. I'm, I'm going to go mango because of mango salsa. Ooh, love, yeah. love a mango salsa. A mango chutney. Ooh. Yeah. Ugh. And that is it for things that came <laughs> up tonight. Chocolate <laughs> or vanilla. <laughs> Oh, love that. Thank you so much, Jen, for being here. We love you. We would never hustle you into not doing once. this. Jen is choosing to be here. We're not we're not hustling her. We're not convincing, True. swindling, none of that. Um, and thank you. We love you. And we'll see you next week. All right. I love you guys. Have an awesome night. Bye. 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 The one, the one scene that I really liked Amy Adams in, and it's barely even a scene though. I just oh. said, "Tag yourself." I'm Amy Adams screaming on the toilet <laughs> after making out with him <laughs> in the ladies' bathroom, and they're all like knocking on the door. Like, Can you guys stop? Like, we have yeah, to. Pee. I have to piss. Yeah. Oh my god. No, I was gonna say the one scene that I actually really liked Amy Adams in was basically when she drops the accent and is like, yeah. "Hey, I, I'm I a real." Agree. I'm a real person, but then he, she basically uses like, oh, we all have the mask we put on, basically. Yeah. We all, you know, put on the shield of yeah. what we want people. And she's like, you perm your hair. And she, she <laughs> basically is like, I've been doing identity fraud. That's the same as you perming your hair. And her just saying so seriously to him, you have straight hair. <laughs> She's yeah, like, she's like, your hair is straight, but you permit to put on a mask for the world. And that's the same as me pretending to be British. And yeah. I'm just like, what the fuck? I like, love it. The earnestness with which she delivered that line. Like, I think this movie was, I don't know if it was intentionally supposed to crack me up at certain times, uh-huh. but there were just a few things that I just thought were so goddamn funny. Yeah. And her being like, yeah, you perm your hair. <laughs> and that's and she was like, no, and it's okay. I'm not judging you. We can uh-huh. be vulnerable here. It's fine that you perm your hair. 
But just, you uh-huh. need to understand that your perm and my British accent are exactly the same. Exactly and I was just the same. like, what the fuck is going on? What else had you giggling and kicking your feet? Oh my god, Jeremy Renner's 10 adult children who all in the house, in house screaming. Like, I, I think maybe I just didn't pick up on it when they introduce his character and they're like, he's the mayor of of New Jersey and yeah. he's a family man and then they just show and they're like he even adopted a kid cause he's such a family man and uh-huh. it's just like I was like okay watch it like gloss sure, over or whatever yeah. but then at that final scene where he's getting like they're like oh we've reduced your sentence but you do still have to not be the mayor anymore and go to jail because yeah and everyone's flipping out and all his so we've got his wife who we kind of know as this side character who doesn't speak but then they pan back to all his kids on the stairs and i would say the youngest of them was 26 yeah like it was like all your adult children that live with you all 10 of your adult children i'm like why did that just send me into orbit like he's a he's a family man no just all of your adult kids don't work because you're yeah. the mayor like uh-huh. <laughs> why did that send me also i know it was intentionally supposed to be funny but the running joke of um the ice fishing yeah. story the ice fishing story that never ends but then him being like he died in a different way yeah. like i also was like okay you got me you got me with that mm-hmm. one mm-hmm. he died a different way many years later yeah. like that was just to me objectively very funny mm-hmm. but simply was overlooked by the fact that louis ck was even in this movie at oh all. god I was, like, I was like weird choice but okay i guess yeah. for the time it wasn't mm-hmm. but i will say i while so much of this movie, like, I hated seeing Jeremy Renner on my screen and watching those two interact, horrific. Watching Jennifer Lawrence and Christian Bale interact, brilliant. Everything. Loved it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That scene where it's basically the Jennifer Lawrence drop where you're like, mm-hmm. oh, she's his wife. Yeah. Um, And him coming home to her having, like, I don't know set fire to the house in some way or whatever Mm -hmm. seeing that interaction and and that setup for who those characters are to each other was so fucking good and i will say it's basically told to you early on that uh christian bale does not want to be with this woman anymore but he's almost like feels like he has to be Mm -hmm. if jennifer lawrence also started stripping in front of me saying come to bed and looking the way she did in this movie, I would also be powerless. Yep. What What also, is there to do? I'd also be like, oh, sorry, babe. Let me go do more tax fraud so I can buy you more nice things. Because exactly. Because you, you deserve it, queen. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> now, I would love to see those two work together again, though. Yeah, I think sure. that have is. The, yeah, have they ever That is a powerhouse. Since? No. No, yeah. Definitely not. I would, yeah, swap out Bradley Cooper for Christian Bale in whatever you're going to do yeah. next, David or Russell, because... Well, I just hate that those two, like, Jennifer Lawrence and Bradley Cooper had, like, their little heyday where they did so many different movies together. It was this, Silver Linings Playbook, Joy. Joy. And then I think they did, like, this weird one called Selena together, which was, like, a flop. But, okay, can we talk about the hair? Yes. Can we talk about... So, there are so many different really wonderful things this is a hair forward film absolutely and and not like amy adams is just step one amy adams beautiful red hair yeah different stylings throughout standard right and then we're like like stepping up this movie goes so crazy christian bale's fake comb over hilarious yeah um i did love that they started out with that showing us how he does it like a 10 minute extended scene of him just hairspraying the shit out of his comb over brilliant hilarious um, Jeremy Renner's fucking, like, why was his hairline at his eyebrows? <laughs> just, like, the most weird, like, quaffed. I guess it was very, like, I'm the mayor of New Jersey. Yeah. Like, it was, it was very much. Very 70s, that. yeah. Oh, but that just, and then moving up, we've got Bradley Cooper's perm, also kind of hilarious. Yeah, love. Especially that we see him doing the perm. Oh, I think. yeah. Like, that was very vulnerable, I think. It was. That was, that was a very, like, that's, that's who we, he is. That's when we learn that his character is kind of, like, does not have the upper hand on anyone because mm-hmm. he, like, also, like, lives with his elderly mother and his fiance who he hates yeah. and is perming his hair and is basically, like, he's the FBI agent, but he he lives, like, way less of a quality, like, like you know, luxurious life than mm-hmm. the two scammers he's working yeah. with. Like, we see Christian Bale and his beautiful house with his beautiful wife 
schmoozing, mm-hmm. dining, and then Bradley Cooper fucking just like DIY perm. Yeah, fucking. cleaning the fish tank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which was really good. But then the the hair of all hairs. Because uh-huh. Jennifer Lawrence's fucking whatever they were doing. What was going on? I mean, it must have been so easy for her to step into this role when you put her in costumes and, yeah. like, makeup and hair like that. Like, that's you, bitch. Like, all just piled on top of the head. I'm reading a book right now, a book series that's actually, like, not very well written at all. Uh-huh. It's maybe supposed to be for young adults, but there is, like, extended, like, pornographic sequences in it. So I do of not course. understand why it could potentially be a YA book. But it's written of the quality <laughs> Of a YA, you know, mm-hmm. no hate yeah. to YA. There's a lot of great YA books out there. But this one is very, it's not well written. But I'm reading it anyways. But uh-huh. the characters are always described, like the female characters are described. They're like, you know, of course, extended sequences describing what everyone is wearing. Because that's mm-hmm. just very basic, like, girly pop fantasy. Like, yeah. I put on my, I put my hair up in a messy bun. Or like uh-huh. very, but all like when they're getting fancy, it's always like I piled my hair on top of my head. Or like... On the crown of my head, like braids on the crown of my head, and I pi- and I'm just like, what do you mean you piled your hair on top of your head? But I'm like, Jay- Jen- this. Jennifer Lawrence, this really put into perspective. I'm like, so now I'm picturing all of these like mythical fairy women as being like New Jersey mob wives because I'm like, oh, if you're gonna pile your hair, on might top as of well. Your head, if you're gonna that's pile what it's it, supposed to be. That's what it is. Is mm-hmm. the J Law like the side bang? Yeah. The side sweep bang with the one curl that comes down. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the rest just like poofing on top. This is very specifically for me the scene, the live and let die scene that she oh. does. Which yes. did you love that? Yes or yes. no? Okay. Yes, I did. Great. Yeah. I remember being obsessed with that when I was fourteen years old. Yeah, um, which and I, can... I had seen this movie. For sure. I think, like, a good, like, character exercise to do, like, even if it's never in your media that you're producing, that, like, a good, like, way, I think, to, like, expose a character's, like, vulnerable side is, like, what are they like when they're singing very earnestly and very badly? Like, have any character I want to see, like, what's the scenario in which they are belting it out poorly, right? Uh Because that's gonna, that's gonna show me the real you. Like, I am mo- my most authentic self when I'm singing Whitney horrifically in my car and then exactly. I swerve into a guardrail. Like, that's, <laughs> like, I'm sorry, like, it's not my best self, but it is myself. To have your character, yeah, earnestly cleaning the house and just <clears throat> belting it out. Like, I really think that every, mm-hmm. you know, if you want to, an acting exercise, I've never acted in my life, but if you want to, like, <laughs> get into character, think, like, how would this character mm-hmm. really, like, sing badly? Uh-huh. Is it at the karaoke? Is it cleaning the house? Is it in the car? Where is mm-hmm. it? Let's build from there. Because I do, I liked the, the perming was very vulnerable mm-hmm. and the, the cleaning the house and singing was also like a very like, ooh, yeah, they're yeah. not doing, like what an easy way to show they're such a vulnerable state, right? Yeah, which I feel like I didn't get with Christian Bale and Amy Adams and that's why I didn't give a shit about their characters. Well, and that's I also mean, that they never were vulnerable. That they yeah. always were like, we are so smart. We have the upper hand. We never yeah. actually, even when he like goes to uh, Jeremy Renner's house and is like, uh-huh. hey man, I got to tell you, like, I really yeah. like you and I need you to know that this is happening. And he kind of, he wants it to be more of like, oh, thanks for telling me. Let's yeah. continue to work together. And Jeremy Renner's like, get the fuck out of my house. Yeah. And he's sort of like upset that this like pseudo friendship is sort of ending. Uh-huh. Even then, I didn't really feel like he's clearly like seems a little heartbroken about it. But uh-huh. even then, it's like you still are getting what you want because you still are going to flip the script and get, you know, your comeuppance in the end. So yeah. it was never really, yeah, there never was really that like true vulnerable character moment for either of them which i think because we saw so severely with mm-hmm. the other people that it just would have been nice to get a little bit of that from everyone yeah because yeah give me give me stakes to like care i guess exactly um can we talk about the wham the wham oh so we'll start museum yes <laughs> oh my god i like literally i was like i've been gasped like- Oh my god. So yeah, this movie was filmed uh like in the like the nearest city I would describe for yeah. where where we grew up, like whatever the nearest 
like actual city I would describe it as being, but it's not like it's not like Boston or New York. It's like a smaller. It's like a mid-sized city, but I would it's describe technically it technically the second biggest city in um, New England. Yeah, but that's not really very impressive. No, because it's not. like come on, like Hartford, yeah. Connecticut. Okay, <laughs> God. Um, but, but yeah, people, the Worcester Art Museum. People hate people hate on Worcester because it's not Boston. And they Boston isn't Wor- shit. <laughs> they describe Worcester as being like kind of trashy, but I'm a staunch Worcester defender. I love yeah. Worcester, Massachusetts. It's, Absolutely. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, though I could not believe it. I was like, I've I've fucking been there. Like that's insane. I love when movies when you're like, oh, oh, I've been that, there. Oh, oh, look at her. Oh, I was like in the holdovers. That's my friend. Yeah, in the holdovers when they like are bopping around Boston. I'm like, uh-huh. oh my god. I've been there. That's uh-huh, so fun. Uh-huh. But also, it's just like Worcester, Massachusetts is never going to come up. So I'm like, let no. me have this. <laughs> exactly. I It strangely, I think, comes up more than we realize. Mm. You know what I mean? But I was like, Yeah, I do remember this movie being made and my dad, who worked in Worcester at the time, being like, they're filming a big movie. I'm like, oh. I actually, my like next door neighbor was an extra in some scene. I don't know what really? scene. But I just oh, remember her neat. being... Her being like, oh, yeah, since I don't work because I'm a, you know, a stay-at-home mom. She's like, I'm going to go be an extra in this movie. When you're a stay-at-home mom, but your kids are, like, in high school. It's yeah. like, what? Like, what okay. do you do? Yeah. Um, but she's like, I'm going to just go be an extra in this movie in Worcester. And we're like, oh, that's so fun. But then she was like, yeah, it's got it's American Hustle. We were like, oh, you're that's, oh, like, for real. Yeah. Like, that's, like, an actual movie. Mm-hmm. Good for you, Kim. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I was thrilled. I forgot that that scene. Um was in this movie. And they they filmed a good chunk of it in Worcester, from what yeah. I know. Yeah, like most of it, I think. Which makes sense, because I feel like Worcester and New Jersey have the same vibe. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. <Yeah. laughs> um, one other critique I will give this movie is I don't think anyone smoked enough cigarettes. Yeah. There was hardly any smoking that I can come up with yeah cigs inside like why were they not all ripping cigs inside 1978 what are you yeah. guys talking about come on bradley cooper you can As have them he... right you can have them go out to the disco and doing <sighs> like bumps of coke but nary a cigarette in sight yeah hated that that I felt didn't like even, i didn't that think felt, of that but so true I was, thinking, I was thinking about it this morning and i was like why did this feel so like inauthentic and there's a hundred different reasons yeah but that was definitely one of them Mm, yeah no cigs inside yeah i would say in the ways that this movie desperately wants to be a martin scorsese film but simply it just does not have the sauce no i would say if we're gonna transform it right we this (laughs) is our our basic and we want to get it as close to our scorsese as possible of course what we need to improve on is that we need a script supervisor to (laughs) To redo this dialogue because yeah. so much of it was so bad. Bad. And why do I feel like like so often when the characters were like swearing, they were like swearing as if with the intention that it was gonna get bleeped out. Like they're like, mm. we know this movie's gonna be on cable TV. Like I <laughs> know they're gonna have to take this yeah. fuck out. So the delivery was like, fuck. like <laughs> you know, like like we got the F and the K, but not the middle because they're like, I know they're gonna cut that anyways. Yeah. So just like the yeah, the intensity was just yeah. like not there and just like the way the characters spoke to each other, I was like, we need to like we need to spice this up a little because uh-huh. it just I just didn't care. And then you need uh Thelma Schoonmaker to re edit the entire thing because I thought the editing in this was atrocious. I mm-hmm. thought the pacing was weird. The well, story like- can we talk about the pacing for a second? Because it's like I didn't think weird, it was... but not bad. Not exactly, bad, exactly. Because it, it was weird. fine. It was just very consistently at the slightest slope and always yes. kind of like inching up. There was no like up and down of it, which mm-hmm. fine. Not every movie needs that. I feel like it's common, but you know what I mean. It was. It was so. Yeah, I agree. It was so strange, but I wasn't mad about it. I guess. I know I was mad because I'm like it's not bad but it's perplexing and yes. I was like I'm like the like the way this story is being told is just so incorrect I'm like yeah an editor just needs to get in there and just re reorder some things chop some things up take a good amount out I would mm-hmm. say there was so much unnecessary fucking shit in two this movie. hours and eighteen minutes did not need to happen hour forty five. Yeah, I don't know. But I was just like, yeah, just the, the pacing. I was like, I understand why, but 
I just, that was not a decision that I think should have been made. It was it very was, strange. Yes. It, it was strange is the best way I can describe it. Yeah. Yeah. So like a new editor, a uh, script supervisor sinks inside. And that's going <laughs> to yeah. give you an 80% boost in the direction that you're aiming for. What did for. you think about the costumes? Because I know we talked about the hair. <laughs> yeah, I thought, um, like, again, like, kind of mid. Um, some really it tickled me, and others, I was just like, this is kind of stupid. So it was yeah. like... it felt. I, some of them just felt too much like a costume. Yes. Well, so w- when you have, like, Christian Bale looking the way he is, it, like, of course, it's going to feel kind of costumey, but that was like part of the character so I didn't mind as much. Mm-hmm. Amy Adams had a lot of really great outfits, but they also they were like They put her boobs to work in this movie. Oh, but they're like, "Oh, and now you're going to go to the disco, so we have an excuse to put you in this rhinestone jumpsuit." And yeah. I'm like, "I'm not mad at it, but did we really need that whole extended sequence of her and Bradley Cooper going to the disco? Like, I guess for setting, I guess. I don't really know." Yeah, well, to kind of push the narrative that their relationship was a little more Like, I understand. <sighs> I I get it. But it sucks. <laughs> yeah, I was like, whatever. But then, yeah, I think, like, a lot of other of the costumes were just, like, also kind of unmemorable. So yeah. I'm like, you're, like, really trying to hammer home that it's the 70s, but, like, not enough. I don't know. Like, like it's too, it was too heavy-handed in some spots yeah. and then not enough in others. So do you want to get into our regularly scheduled programming? Absolutely. So who are we going to pick for Fuck, Marry, Kill? Are the, would we say it's, like, Christian Bale? Okay, wait, do... Again, four, there seem to be four. Fuck, Mary kill, fight. Amy yeah. Adams, Jennifer Lawrence, Christian Bale, J- Bradley Cooper. Of course, yeah. I, I think we're all killing Bradley Cooper. Yeah, like slowly. I'm going to drown him in that fish tank. Oh my god. Um, yeah, kill Bradley Cooper. Um, I'm going to marry Jennifer Lawrence. I think we could live a happy life together. I would give her the attention that she needs. I will import... Her fancy um, nail polish for her any day. Um, Wait, the way that was so relatable, though, she's like, I kind of like that it smells rank. I'm like, girl, you're huffing paint. But I'm yeah. like, I really understand when something smells like like gasoline. Uh-huh. I'm like, yeah. ooh, like I want to huff gasoline. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I understand. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah. Kill Bradley Cooper, f- uh, marry Jennifer Lawrence. Uh... I, hmm. Part of me just wants to fight Amy Adams. Mm -hmm. Not that I want to fuck Christian Bale in this. I kind of do. Yeah, I think you do. (laughs) Um, I don't, like, no part of me wants to fight his character, though. You know what I mean? Like, I think he was just trying his best. Amy Adams pissed me off a little bit. So I guess Mm -hmm. I'll fuck him and I'll, I'll fight Amy. See, I, like, can't decide if I could handle being his wife. Because, like, clearly mm. that is its own, like, trials and tribulations. So I don't really think I want to be married to him. But I also definitely... But what about once he brings his art business legitimate? <sighs> I, yeah, I guess. But just still, I don't know. That's, it seems high drama. I'm a little more low-key. But I also definitely cannot be married to Rosalind. She's also too much. I want to be the mob wife. I can't yeah. be... I can't be handled with providing for the mob wife like that simply is not in my Mm. repertoire so i think i'm gonna have to marry amy adams because she seems like a pretty neutral chill middle ground okay i can i can put up with the swindling yeah and the fake british accent like i also would be like babe let's just let's be british tonight and she'd Uh be like oh um eat it's greensbury and i'd be like yes like let's get into it i'll be Uh like like let's practice our fake accents tonight babe yeah so i'm gonna marry amy adams because she just seemed like a good neutral middle ground not too much drama i'll fuck um rosalind because you know that goes crazy absolutely i'm gonna i'm gonna kill uh, Christian Bale and I want to fight Bradley Cooper. I want to, f- I want to fight him while he's in his little curlers. Yeah, you'd beat his ass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I don't know, but him coked up though, beating the shit out of Louis C.K. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I will say I liked that scene. I, yeah. I also that was kind of a vibe. Um. So I think you would also have to like get coked up. To yeah. <laughs> in the you'd club like, bathroom, I'm the bitch who's trying to pee. And yeah. they're making out in there, and I'm gonna bust the door down and beat their asses. You're like, I'd say, like, if you did coke, you'd be like one of like a rabid like chihuahua, almost. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Like, you would crush someone's ankles. No, like, I'm, like, a crusty little white dog, but, like, <laughs> yeah. you you know I could bite. Like Yeah, absolutely. They're like, is it friendly? And I'm snarling at you. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I'm not friendly. <laughs> Do I look friendly? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And then, so you're serving your little party, your American Hustle Worcester at the Worcester Art Museum. Uh (laughs) You're at your Wham party. What are you going to serve as your food and drink? Like I said earlier, this movie strikes me as a movie that your grandfather watches. Mm. And I'm going to serve you a grandfather meal. Um, I'm going to give you a Reuben. (laughs) (laughs) And a Heineken. Oh my god, why does that feel so perfect? A Reuben for this movie? I actually could not find a better way to describe this than being like the mid Reuben of movies. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. a pretty disappointing Reuben, actually. It's very accurate. Wow. That's kind of beautiful. Yeah. And a Heineken, which is also an insanely disappointing beer. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's like the most neutral mid of all beers. Uh-huh. Uh, I came up, I do not know what kind of headspace I was in when I made this up, but I've decided that there's this new game called Mob Meal, and it's, you're the mob <laughs> wife, okay. and the mob wife aesthetic, an important part of this is that you sit in the best corner booth at the restaurant mm-hmm. with you and your girl, and you they bring you out cocktails and appetizers, endless. Okay. Endless cocktails and appetizers, that's, and then you just sit in the corner and you gab while your mob husbands are off doing Love that. business. <laughs> this is really important. And although this doesn't happen in this movie, I think we sort of get that vibe, right? Mm-hmm. That Rosalind and the other wife are kind of pushed aside of like, we're going to talk business now. Of and course, they're like, we're yeah. going to have our martinis and eat our calamari because we're the mob wives, New Jersey mob wife. Mm-hmm. So my game is that it's called Mob Meal and you have a, a D20 and you roll your D20. So you Ooh. get your number one through 20. And then you just go to Yelp. And I would say you're allowed to cut out, um, like, chain restaurants because that doesn't feel chill. So you can skip over those. But so you're like, I roll a six. You just go to Yelp, whatever in your area, top six, go down, one, two, three, whatever restaurant six is. Mm -hmm. Okay. You go open their menu appetizer section, Uh roll a D6, one through six. We're only categorizing the first six appetizers listed because anything after that is probably not worth ordering anyways. Fair. So roll four. Okay. Down the list. One, two, three, four. Oh mozzarella sticks that's you have to order it Uh that's you just get takeout everyone does this and brings your appetizer and you can do also do it for cocktail if you feel so inclined but just like i also feel like some sort of a martini that's not really a martini like a lemon drop when you go out and they're like it's a pear martini and you're like girl it's sure you're like there's seltzer water in this what part of this is a martini? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, a fucked up... They're like, it's raspberry vodka and maraschino cherry juice. It's a martini. And I'm like, what the hell? But I'm still gonna order it. Oh, it sounds course. nice. Yeah. But I'm like, why is this listed as a martini? Yeah, a uh-huh. fucked up non-martini. And then you, yeah. for some reason, you have to play this weird mob meal game where you just order a random appetizer from a Love. random restaurant. I don't Love. know. I also wrote down Wendy's 4 for 4. I don't know why that also <laughs> made me feel some type of way. That's funny. <laughs> And then what are you watching next? Just just put on The Departed. Just put on The Departed. This is obviously what that movie wanted to be. I think that that's what you have to do. And I think that your grandfather, who is watching this with you, will be forever thankful. <laughs> <laughs> I, similarly, I think the next logical step is you watch Vice, which has Dick, mm. uh, Amy Adams and Christian Bale both really acting the house down boots. Okay, um, yeah. In, I never in thought better. In a better way. I mean, yeah. you can watch The Big Short, which is another, like, financial kind of fraud yeah. movie. But yeah. I don't really care for that one as much. But I don't want to do that. I don't want the same vibes. I actually want to rid myself of any Fair. vibes of this. So I think you should watch the 2019 Fire Festival documentary. Oh, another about, scam. But it's, like, a scam. But it's also just, like, more fun and also yeah. real. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, that man talking about how he sucked dick for those water bottles is so funny and will never not be funny. Oh, yeah. So I think you should watch the Fire, Fire Fest documentary. That's a really, really good answer. <laughs> um, and then what are you going to give this movie out of 10? I'm going to give it a four. I'm going to give it, yeah, four and a half, five. Eh, four and a half. Yeah, I kind of hated it. It had certain elements that I liked, but ultimately I was like, are you simply... Just it just could not grip me. 
Every and every time it gripped me, it immediately lost me. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm like you had me for a second there, but and it's now like I the just... opposite of edging. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Like, like yeah, edging in the negative. Oh, it was just <laughs> yeah, exactly. it was not. It was not good, and especially like going into it hoping to really like it. Yeah, sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh like oh, what a bummer. Not the um, case. Uh, but. but Hopefully next week is better. We're going to do um, Arrival. I actually also do not like that movie. So this is... We're, we're going to be kind of haters this week. Fine. Week. Sorry, Amy. Sorry. I'm we're going to make gonna, you work for it, girl. <laughs> I'm going to kind of be a hater. Um, but what thank you, you all for listening. It's Amy Adams. If you want to listen to our episode on Challengers, mm-hmm. where we're not haters, we're lovers, actually. Yes. Um, we did that on the Patreon. We covered the new gay tennis movie, obviously. So the link to that is in the description below. If you'd like to give us $2.86 to listen to us talk about uh, some newer films. We also covered Monkey Man last month. Um, mm-hmm. If you want to listen to us chat about those. Mm-hmm. And you can also follow us on the social medias. You know what to do. Also, if you could give us stars, please. Please. I'm begging you, please. <laughs> Can you please give me a star rating, please? (laughs) Show it to me, Rachel. Show it to me, Rachel. Show me your stars, please. (laughs) Um, I'm going to hustle you into giving me a star rating, but Mm -hmm. it's just my hustle is me asking you very politely. Yes. (laughs) That's actually my hustle is that I just uh, am pathetic and beg. (laughs) My hustle is lay down and take it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, but yeah, we'll be coming at you with most likely arrival next week for Amy Adams, but then who's to say what the future holds? So send us your movie suggestions as yeah. always. We, we usually do, we usually do, um, queer movies for June. So oh, if you wow. have any, uh, suggestions, I feel like we've done a lot of the big hitters, but yeah. we're kind of, we're kind of creeping into, um, we need some, some indie films, some give me the bad ones i want to talk about bad Ooh. queer movies wait that um, actually might be a great idea bad bad because there's movies. plenty of them um yeah send us your suggestions i would love to watch um some really poorly acted lesbian drama Oof. <laughs> yeah what well, what's that one um about the fossils ammonite oh i'm not even <laughs> touching ammonite with a fucking <laughs> 10 foot pole Uh, But thank you all for listening. We love you uh, and goodbye and good night.